I am at a loss. My beloved wife is gone. In her place is my son, small and helpless. As much as this place means to me, as much as it meant to Catherine, this is no place for an infant, especially an infant without his mother. It's time to go. The project was in trouble before, both internally and externally. Progress has come to a halt, both because our recalculations have gotten us nowhere and because the mutant attacks occur several times a day. I regret that it has come to this. I know that if I leave, our work may come to an end. Madison has never been on the best of terms with the Brotherhood. Aside from Scribe Rothschild, she'll tolerate none of them. If she's the one dealing with them, who knows what will happen? It breaks my heart to go. But I must put the needs of my child before my own. Well, here we are, nestled all safe and snug inside Vault 101. It's so cold down here. Colder still with Catherine gone. Oh, Catherine, I so wish you were here with me. How the hell am I supposed to do this by myself? Live down in this hole. Take care of our child. But this is our life now. So I guess I'd better get used to it. The overseer who runs the place is an overbearing bully. But I've dealt with worse. Well, here we are again. Project Purity and me. It's been close to twenty years since my last entry. Since I left all of this behind to make a life for my son. We've spent that time in Vault 101, tucked away from the rest of the world. It wasn't perfect, but it was safe, and that's all I could have hoped for. Now my son is a grown man, handsome, intelligent, confident, just like his old man. <laughs> and as hard as it was to admit it, he doesn't need his daddy anymore. So here I am, back where it all began. Project Purity. God, we wanted to change the world. We really thought the waters of life could be a reality. And that's why this is a momentous occasion. Because even after 19 years, I still believe it. Project Purity can and will be operational. This is just the beginning. This is day two of my attempt to resurrect this project. I've got one of the portable fusion generators up and running but it's just enough to power the emergency lighting and a couple of other systems. That will serve for now, but I'll need help powering up the mainframe. Time to visit Madison at Rivet City. I spoke with Dr. Lee Madison at Rivet City. It went about as well as I expected. That is to say, she thinks I'm completely mad. How can I blame her? She's got her own life, her own team, and is making real, tangible scientific progress. And here I come again, the very paragon of failure and false promises. But the reality is, I need Madison and whatever scientific team she may have assembled. I can't do this myself. Project Purity is bigger than me. It always was. And without Catherine... God, I can't let this die. Not again. Not like this. Even in Vault 101, my work on Project Purity never really stopped. Soon after we arrived, my nightly routine included sneaking into the restricted areas, searching for, I don't know, whatever I could find. It was a vault facility, after all. The place was built with some of the most advanced technology this country had ever developed. Those excursions never turned up anything particularly useful. So, one night after half a bottle of scotch... I broke into the overseer's office. It was easy enough to hack his console, gain access to the restricted files. Most of it was garbage. 
Propaganda, spy reports, just plain rambling bullshit, really. But there was one thing, one name that stood out amongst all the others. Dr. Stanislaus Braun. I knew of Braun's work, of course. He was a celebrity in his day, Voltex sorcerer scientist, leaving his peers in awe of his technological wizardry. But it was in Vault 101 that night in the overseer's office. I first learned of Braun's involvement in Voltex's social preservation program and his work on something called Gek, the Garden of Eden creation kit. I'm off to Vault 112 to search for anything of Braun's that might help me get this purifier up and running. All I know is that it's west of some place called Evergreen Mills, and it's well hidden in some sort of garage. But I'll find it. I have to. It's so close. But that's the story of Project Purity, isn't it? An eternity of almost theirs. Let's see if Braun has the missing puzzle piece. There was some sort of Welcome to the Weatherly Hotel. I'm your hostess, Vera Weatherly. Well, I really shouldn't tell you, but have you heard about Polly Cantelli? He's addicted to chems. His poor wife, Cindy, is at her wit's end. Poor dear. I know what it's like to be alone. I'd love to take him in. Don't worry. I have the means to keep him fed and healthy, but most importantly, safe. Oh, that's wonderful! If you ever wander back into Rivet City, why don't you check up on us? You're always welcome. I hope you found me a place to live. You really found her? Oh, thank you so much! I can't believe everything you've done for me. Most people would have kept on walking when I ran up to them screaming like I did. I'll get my stuff together and move on out there right away. Come visit me sometime. Hey there. Well, sure, we've got plenty for the moment. <laughs> the very best kind. Try some. You've never tasted sweeter, I'll warrant. Bye. Hello, stranger. I'm Tinker Joe, premier supplier of robotic parts and service throughout the DC wasteland. You might be surprised at what you can use to keep a robot working. I'm afraid these bots are all spoken for. I'm just delivering them now. I've got a custom gutsy that isn't spoken for, but... Well, RL3's a bit finicky about the company he keeps, and I don't think he likes the look of you. Nothing personal, of course. Kiss my ass. We've got plenty of bottle caps. Let me in, goddammit. How many times do we have to go through this? You're not getting near. I can stand here all day yelling at you through this damn speaker if I have to. 
I've already told you Tenpenny won't allow zombies to live here. Who the hell are you calling a zombie? You're definitely not human, that's for damn sure. For the last time, no zombies allowed. Can't you tell the difference between me and a feral? Fine. I'll show you the goddamn difference. Just you wait. You'll get yours, all of you. I'm really not in the mood, so leave me alone. I thought I told you to get the hell out of here. Tenpenny doesn't want your goddamn caps, and I don't want the goddamn headache. For the last time, get your rotten, ugly, goddamn ghoul ass off Mr. Tenpenny's private property. What? No, just those damn ghouls. Sorry, thought you were one of them. Ghoul or not, I must inform you that you are trespassing on Alistair Tenpenny's private property. Renters and official business only. This ain't a theme park, kid. And even if it was, you wouldn't be able to afford the admission. Now bugger off. Perhaps you'll fit in around here better than I thought. All right, I'll take your money, but don't press your luck. I got my eye on you. Don't bother Tenpenny or the other residents. If you so much as sneeze in the wrong direction, I'll gut you. Mr. Tenpenny isn't taking callers. Hold on there a minute. Oh, all right, I'll let you in, but if Tenpenny hollers because he isn't expecting you, you're dead. Fancy that! A visitor! I seldom get visitors, which is a tiresome shame, because I'm usually relentlessly bored out of my right mind. All of these confounded people fluster about like I'm made of eggshells and about to fall to pieces in any moment. I'm surprised they even let you in. So, what do you think of my fine tower here? It's quite the jewel of the wasteland, isn't it? I dare say I'm quite proud of it myself. Right, oh, when I saw this place jutting up out of the horizon, I knew what I had to do. I hired some muscle, and we got this place fixed up right quick. I had the great fortune to run into Mr. Burke, an absolute gem of a man. He certainly has a way of getting done what needs to get done, doesn't he? Then it was a matter of getting the right type of tenants with the right type of assets, and the rest is, as they say, history. I complained offhand one day about how I thought that heap of metal on the horizon was a bit of an eyesore. Mr. Burke offered to take care of it. Burke is such an agreeable man, isn't he? I don't know how I got along without him. I practically don't have to think about things anymore. He takes care of everything. I seldom even have to ask. He's a real go-getter, that one. We need more men like him if we're going to rebuild the world. Oh, no, I'm certainly rather sore about all of that, but certain sacrifices must be made. Besides, Burke assured me that bomb was quite unstable. I asked Burke to suggest they vacate. It was all a matter of time. Think of it as helping speed along the process of natural selection. Don't lose any sleep over it. to introduce myself. I am Godfrey, your personal robotic butler. 
I am here to look after your needs and to keep you happy and entertained. What can I do for you? I once visited a crematorium that gave discounts for burn victims. Of course, of course, don't let me keep you. To Vault 112, resident. According to sensors, you have arrived 202.3 years behind schedule. Please redress in your Vault Tech issued Vault suit before proceeding. If you have misplaced your suit, I am authorized to distribute a new one. Once dressed, please proceed down the stairs to the main floor so that you may enter your assigned Tranquility Lounger. A tranquility lounger is available. Please be seated. Hey there, sport. Beautiful day, isn't it? Say, you should go talk to Betty. She's waiting for you over on the playground. Have fun, sport. What can I do for you, sport? <laughs> Such a kidder. You're on Tranquility Lane, of course. Where else would you be? Nope, afraid not. Don't you worry about it, though. You'll find him. Of course it is. It's America, isn't it? Another perfect Saturday afternoon. Make sure you enjoy it, sport. You mean besides how wonderful it is to live here? Everyone's very friendly. Even old lady dithers, though she's lost most of her marbles. Sounds like you've been spending too much time with your nose in those darned comic books, sport. Have a great day. 
Hiya, kiddo. What's the good word? Can't say that I have, kiddo. Don't worry. I'm sure he'll turn up. Yep, you've got that right. Heck of a day to get some work done outdoors. Nice place, real nice. Everyone's friendly and always happy to lend a hand. Is that so? Well, you ought to tell that to my big toe, kiddo. Hurts like the dickens since I stubbed it earlier today. Feels pretty real to me. Have a great day! just looking at the new Robco catalog. Some impressive things they're doing these days. Later. Well, hi there. No, I haven't. But when I do, I'll tell him you're looking for him. Well, of course it is. What a silly thing to say. What else would it be? Well, there's certainly never a dull moment. I think it's like any other street, really. Always something to see and always something to talk about. Computer what now? Why don't you go find Timmy and have a nice game of catch? Have a great day. Well, hi there. I don't think so, but then I haven't really been looking for him. Sorry. I suppose. I hadn't really noticed. I like it well enough, I suppose. Mabel is good company most of the time, and, well, the other neighbors are mostly very nice. Sorry, kiddo, but I'm not in the mood for jokes. Bye-bye! Hey there, Sport, how's it going? He disappeared on you, huh? Don't worry, I'm sure you'll find him soon. You won't find a day like this anywhere else. Sure, Sport, whatever you say. <laughs> Heck of a place to live. Janet and I, well, we're quite happy here. Take care now. Good day to you. Bye bye. Good day. Good day. Well, hi there. No, sweetie, I haven't. I'm sure he'll come looking for you before long, though. It sure is. But it always is here. What? Oh, sweetie. 
maybe you should just run along and play. Well, George and I have been here, why, as long as I can remember. Take care now. You, you don't belong here. You're not supposed to be here. It's not real, none of it. It needs to end. The suffering must end. We're not really here. We're not really talking. It's all made up, make believe. We're sleeping, dreaming. The dream became a nightmare. It has to end, it just has to. But we're not in charge, he is. And he doesn't want us to wake up. He calls himself Betty now, but he's still the same. He can put on a new face all he likes, but underneath he's still evil. Braun. Bastard thinks because he helped create this place he's God here. But I know he still uses the fail-safe terminal. I know it. Don't know. Can't sleep sometimes. Hear voices. My own skin doesn't feel right. None of this is right. You've got to believe me. You've got to find that failsafe. It's in the abandoned house. He doesn't want us going in there because he's afraid we might find it. It's the only terminal to the outside. The only way to shut the whole thing down. You've got to find it. Remember what I told you? The fail-safe. You've got to find it. Hiya. Hi there. I'm Timmy. Wanna play? What? You're weird. It's okay, I guess. I don't really have nobody to play with, except for Betty. And she's kind of, well, she's mean. Your dad? Nope, I haven't. Did he get lost? Bye-bye. Hi. Oh, someone new to play with. What good luck I have lately. I was just starting to get bored. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. Gee, I don't know. What's he like? <laughs> That's your daddy? Oh, we're going to have so much fun. This is going to be the best game ever. <laughs> you don't get to say no. If I want to play a game, you're going to play. And I want to. I said I want to play a game. It's easy. You make Timmy Newsbone cry, and I'll help you. If you don't, then I guess you'll never find out where your daddy is. Wanna play? What? No, she didn't. Did she? I don't like her. She's creepy. And she laughs at stuff that isn't funny. Bye-bye.
Do you realize what you've done? You've triggered the failsafe, ruined everything. The subjects will die, and I'll be stuck here in this hell alone. You ruined everything. Everything! You've taken them all from me! You've left me with nothing! It's not fair. Nobody to play with ever again. You? No, I! I am the creator of this world! We are so lost. So... all alone. The Garden of Eden Creation Kit. It was for terraforming. For restoring the world after a nuclear disaster. Unstable technology, and ultimately boring. Why remake the old reality when instead you could create any reality you choose? It is my greatest achievement. The best of the many simulations I've run in these 200 years. I played with the others, but they bored me. This version never grew old. It amused me over and over and over again. My name is Stanislaus Braun. I'm a vault scientist. I created this simulation for vault but for myself as well. It was my own design, my own perfection. A better reality than any other. Far greater than my work on the Gek. He's been right here the whole time. And you were too dense to figure it out. The dog, you see. Man's best friend. But now you've taken all my friends from me. Yes, I'm sure he's fine. No doubt when you leave the simulation, he'll be waiting for you. But there's no one waiting for me. Isn't it obvious? You've run the failsafe, disrupted everything! I have no power over you. There's the door. Go. Run along now! <laughs>